What's up, y'all? In the last video, I had mentioned that I would picked up two items from Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight is the cheapy tool store here in the U.S. Uh, the second item was a pair of snap ring pliers. It comes with interchangeable heads. This was the cheapest pair they had on the shelf. It was five bucks for this pair. We're going to talk about whether or not this would even work for a locksmith, if you could use it to take apart the most commonly used locks that have kind of retaining ring situations on them. Is it even worth spending the five bucks on? I don't know, let's take a look and find out. One of the first questions you might have is, do I even need a pair of snap ring pliers? The short answer to that is yes, you do need a pair because if you're gonna be working on locks, you are invariably gonna run across a situation where you need to remove a snap ring. Snap ring or retaining rings are either internal or external as this diagram on the back shows internal you would squeeze together to get it apart external like this kind you would squeeze it and it spreads it open when you do so it allows you to slip it over whatever object you squeeze it opens it up bigger let it go and the spring compression goes back down and holds whatever mechanism is involved together uh, so one of the biggest ones that we have is the wiser knobs. Now it's not as common anymore in North America. Wiser was around for a long time. I've already got this picked. I didn't have a key for it. Uh, but you would uh, pick the lock and remove, or if you had a key, you could do it that way. Turn it. And once you get it apart from the knob, and I've got a video on this. I'll post a link right up here in the corner if I remember. But once you get it apart, you will find yourself facing the snap ring that is holding the plug in. Uh, now, if you did not have that, I've seen, uh, I've had to, if, you know, in many situations where I didn't happen to have a pair of snap rings or something with me and I ran across one, this one would be the easiest version to have to do that. Uh, but, you know, you can take a pair of pliers and like grab each side and spread it apart or even a small screwdriver and just reach in there and kind of just pry it open that'll bend your ring and make it re harder to reinstall on the lock so it's best to have the snap ring pliers to remove those rings uh, in videos where i've used uh, these tools before i've had people ask me what brands are my favorite it's not pittsburgh i can assure you that uh, the most commonly available one now that i've found is the wild the 527 this is the same pair we can see 527 right there, wild. Uh, this is the newest version. This is an older version. This was my favorite because y'all know I keep things in tight pouches. So this one has the lowest kind of profile to it. Uh, both of these are reversible. So you would just unscrew the older style, screw it in the other side, and it reverses it to make it work for internal style snap rings. And on the newest style, which is available through wherever tool places or wherever you want to get it, uh, it just has this little turny kind of catch mechanism. And uh, it's not bad, it's not my favorite. Uh, one thing that's kind of important, we'll focus on it also later, is if you look at the tips, you see how they're parallel to each other? That is pretty important. Once we get these apart, I actually have an old pair of these too before they switched to uh, the this black color. This is a Pittsburgh pair too. But if you hold them up, and we'll hold the other one up, you see how it's not parallel? It's off just a bit. So that is one kind of issue with your cheaper pairs is having that exactly parallel when it closes or when it opens, getting into these tight rings makes it much easier than the other ones. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up and take a look at it. The Pittsburgh snap ring pliers with interchangeable heads and uh, again shows you it comes with a 90 degree head a 45 degree head and I guess two straight heads so we will take a look at it uh, the one thing I hate about this and you know there's a ton of brands of snap ring you know channel lock nipex everybody makes snap ring pliers to some degree uh, some are better made than others, obviously, but if we compare the older Pittsburgh, the older cheap pair to the newer cheap pair, the flop. This is one of your big issues, too, with these cheapies, is you have so much kind of flex with that, and we'll hold up again to the camera. Look how far off the center is. So 
very not parallel tips uh, compared to even the older style was better than that so just goes to show they're making them even a little bit junkier than they were before uh, to get them apart or to switch the heads it comes with this 90 degree head and another straight head that looks maybe longer shaft a little bit longer shaft right there and a 45 degree head uh, now on uh, if you're gonna buy you know one pair you don't need the angled heads as long as you buy a good pair with these we'll show you in a little bit how you do kind of need the angle heads for some situations uh, but in general I've never really needed the 90 degree or the angled heads I've got different screwdrivers you know there's there's the replaceable tip style channel lock I'll put a picture of it up here this was also a pair from Harbor Freight it was like 15 bucks for it comes with a little pouch with a bunch of little interchangeable tips I hate those I hate those totally hate those because I always lose the pouch you have to keep the pouch together uh, with the kits or just keep your preferred pair of tips in the interchangeable head you might as well just go ahead and get a permanent thing when you're like what are my tips right well I've had these these for a long long time I've had these these walled that are not made anymore I've had these for about 20 years the tips have never broken on them I don't really see an issue on that if, it's, if you're not abusing them to a degree uh, but the problem with it is you know this 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 the tips switch out or you have to switch it out by pushing down on this button and this little metal flag comes out of the way and drop it and then to make it go to internal style you would have to flip it over here and then kind of get it into the mechanism like so and put it back together like this it's just really awkward to have to do that you, you stand a chance of losing that spring right there uh, and as well again it's just just so wobbly and it, that makes it a lot harder to do some of these tasks so this i just set it to internal it should be external so let's flip it back around most of the time you're going to need the external function of these but we will run across and i'll show you the internal variation too especially on old corbin locks ah come on now get together well, this is one example of just kind of awkward to try to switch it around compared to a decent reversible pair uh, but let's just see how they do period the main thing to take away from this is if we look really close at the tips we can see they are kind of have a, a almost of a flare there we go a little bit of a flared out to them especially this one they kind of go out just a little bit and uh if we look at these we see they're kind of in now that makes it slippy when you're trying to take off retaining rings if you've taken a lot of retaining rings you know what i mean by slippy you go to grab the ring and it slips off of it so starting with the wiser we're going to go in. We're just going to see how these work. And put it in there. Get it in the hole. Now, since they're not parallel, it's not a big a deal on this particular one as it is some of the other ones that we'll look at. But uh, it does make you kind of turn it just a bit. So there we go. So it works, works fine for the wiser. We're gonna to move to an old Dexter. This is not made anymore, but again, you might run across it when you're field re-keying. You might find it on a house. And we're gonna see how it works there. Oh, kind of hard to get in. And this one was always a little bit harder. Oh, so we got wobble. Just stab my finger a little bit. All right, there we go. Oh, my okay, goodness. So there's what I mean by slippy. It's kind of push in as hard as I can and it keeps slipping out of the holes ah. so 
there we go. That is kind of one big problem since it, it's so wobbly and it's not really parallel. It makes it extremely hard to get into these. Oh, there we go. Got it. Smaller ones. Uh, you're not likely to run across an old master ring like this, but it did have its own little snap ring there as well. And tiny holes. And I don't think these tips are actually going to fit for this. They are not. They are just a bit too big to get down into those holes. Using as an example, the .38 tips. I'm assuming these are probably .50 tip, but we see the wild just easily snap right in there. I'll let you spread the ring and get it off. Again, putting these back on. Since they're parallel, you can go straight down onto it, grab it, snap it on. It makes the job of taking these rings on and off much easier than having to deal with this wobbly head and possibly too big a diameter tips to be able to get down in those holes. Another thing that uh, you say, okay, well, I'm never going to run across these. Well, take, for instance, this Sergeant. This is a Rimlock, brand new. Let me see, also a boy. And uh, they use a, a ring that is a, it's kind of a bendable ring. So typically what you can do to get these off is just push on the leg of this. And push, push, push. But, you know, of course you have the danger of it slipping off and stabbing into your finger, which we don't really want. Uh, so on these, I will come in with the retaining ring pliers set to external, stick it behind each leg right here, and then just squeeze, and it will open up the ring just enough for you to get it off. And uh, if we were doing that with the other style, another thing I use, I'm going to point this out real quick, one great thing about this mechanism these is the ability once you take these on and off a lot if you've rekeyed the locks a lot they will kind of get bent apart you see how it's kind of spreading apart with the retaining ring pliers you do have another use for the tool if we put it right there kind of balance it we can squeeze it down course you could do this with a pair of pliers but if you've got this in your hand already there's no point doing that so basically I'm just gonna bend it down onto each side like so and it'll bring it in a little bit closer that way it doesn't slip apart while somebody's using it likewise to put this ring back on we would just hold it up and squeeze it together we forgot to hold the tailpiece steady while we were doing that And there you go, you can use it multi-purpose multi use. Might as well get more than one use out of it other than just removing retaining rings. Also, sometimes on the uh, Schlage, just regular rings like this, where you're trying to get it off and you're sitting here and you're, you're pushing it like I've done a video on, you can just use a screwdriver to take these apart. Sometimes it just slips and slips and slips. You can also take your retaining ring pliers and use that to kind of walk the ring off in a fashion like that. So using this for the same purposes, because that's what the point of the video is, will these $5 pair work? They work, they're just wobbly. The tips won't fit on really small situations. Again, you might be like, well, what about, you know, I never, I just do commercial. I don't ever run across residential stuff. Key and knob cylinders. These used to have a, a snap ring right there around this. You'd have to take that snap ring off to get it apart and put it back on. Uh, old Corbin locks. We see, for instance, this Corbin right here that I've already taken apart. This one uses an internal snap ring. Now, I do want to show you the difference in uh, this and this. So let's go ahead and get this flipped over back to internal style. And we're going to see how well it works on this because this is one of the hardest ones if you've ever 
run across a Corbin, old Corbin knob like this, you know this snap ring that's down in here is kind of hard to get to and to take off. So we're gonna see how well this one does for that exact use. Come on now, okay, so here, again, this just shows kind of the irritation with switching out, flipping them back and forth compared to the other style. But if we look down in here, we see an internal snap ring. This one has to be squeezed together to be able to get it off. Using this pair, we go down, we have a huge issue with this getting in the way of that shaft to be able to get to it. So trying to get down in there with them being both not parallel. Let's flip it around. Definitely can't flip it around because that's in the way. You're like, hey, that's what the 90 degrees are for. Well, that's right. You could switch it to the 90 degrees and use those, but uh, it's still going to be floppy. It's still going to be hard to get those tips in there uh, compared to just one of these. One of these will do the same thing. Do I have one set? Uh, no, I do not. We'll just flip this around quickly to internal style. Put it down in here. You've got plenty of room because it is lower profile. Even with that on that side, squeeze together and our ring comes off and it doesn't slip out of the tips. Uh, lastly on this Corbin, like I said, the tips were too big. The 527 used 0.38 tips. I looked this up last night, so it's not, not like I'm a, a genius on that or anything. Uh, they go up to 0.47 and then like 0.70 and then 0 0.90. 0 0.38 or 0.37, whichever it is, 527 style, is just fine. I've never had a problem with them and I uh, don't likely ever see having a problem with them. This is a pretty old pair. Never really broken tips on them. I don't have to switch out or worry about them being all floppy like this. It's just a much better thing. You know, if you don't have a pair, you know, and I did buy a pair a long time ago, I don't even know why I bought this pair, but you know, it is five bucks. Most people are like, whatever, I'll have five bucks, I'll have it in case I need it. You know, it's good for in case you need it, but it definitely isn't great if you're gonna use it all the time. If you think you're gonna run across situations where you need a pair of snap ring pliers, I really wouldn't recommend getting the Pittsburgh style. You can order one of these for, I think these run about 20 bucks or so for the set. If you don't ever need them, then yeah, you know, maybe spend the five bucks on it just to have it in case you need it. But if you are gonna be doing any type of lock work where you have to take apart locks across a wide range of situations, even panic bars, and it, you'll never know when you're gonna run across one of these devilish little snap rings. So it's a good idea to go ahead and get you a nice pair of Wild 527 again is my favorite one. I just wouldn't buy, I just wouldn't spend the $5. I can go buy a cheeseburger or something. It'd make you much happier than having to fight with these wobbly kind of junky pairs of uh, snap ring pliers. But anyway, if you have any questions or comments, I'm sure we will because on most tool videos, there's always gonna be people that say, buy the channel, like buy whatever. Again, I'm not fond of the replaceable tip because I always lose that little bag. I'm not fond of those. You, you could always put the tip that you're always gonna use in and lose a little bag and not worry about it. Uh, but they're bigger, they're clunkier. Those wild brand are great, low profile, and have never really let me down. So again, if you have any questions or comments on this video or anything else, post it in the comment section. Thanks for watching y'all and we'll catch you next time.